So, okay. if you look at VIX, so VIX, this was the zone. This was the zone. We marked it based on one hour. This was the zone. So, if stepping into the zone like this, someone could have taken an entry here. There's nothing wrong with this. You take an entry there, your stop loss is below here. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Then now, uh, if you notice, this was a double bottom. Double bottom here. So this double bottom here now, if you check to the left, if you look to the left, where was the previous lower high? It was here at the top here. So it doing all this, it was still in this uh, bearish order flow of internal structure. So here, one could have entered there, it was fine. There, there was nothing wrong with that entry. But what they usually like to do, they usually like to... So after, after creating that double bottom, what they are doing, they are simply trapping also uh, those, um, what can I say, ignorant retail traders, people who are not well informed of uh, some of these uh, some of these things that we know. For example, so what, what the majority of retail traders are going to do, once they see that double bottom, what are they going to do? They are going to put their stop loss just below here, right? Just below that double bottom. Because they are going to just take this as a what? They're going to take this as a, as a support. Once they take this as a support, their stop loss is below here. And look at what the market did. Pat came and call, took, took all of them out. So taking out all of their stop losses like this, that is what is what or that, that is what is called collecting liquidity. Liquidity simply fuel, this is simply fuel that the market requires or that the institutions require for them to move price where they want to move it. So basically that was the liquidity that, that was collected here. Double bottom, this was simply liquidity lying below here. They came wiped it out. That's why I say in the morning, in the morning it was around here. I say those that are not in can still enter. So here, uh, this is something that I'm going to teach those that are in the million dollar class. Here, when, when the market is here, like after collecting liquidity, right? Obviously after collecting liquidity, once the market has collected liquidity, once the market has collected liquidity and it's still within your zone, it's still within your demand, it's still within your, your order block, it's still within your favor gap or whatever, once it has collected liquidity, here, all these entries below here, these are entries that one can even go aggressive down here. Why? Because the stop loss is very tight just below the zone here. Why? Number one, liquidity has been collected. There's no way they're going to collect again liquidity on this order block or on that demand. Sometimes what they do, if ever, let's say this is a demand, right? Let's say this is a demand and they are coming down, right? And they're coming down and they're coming down. If ever they don't collect any liquidity, if they're coming down like this, what the, like what they did here, what they do sometimes, they wipe out this demand here, wipe out and close above. So this wiping out and closing above is actually a collection of liquidity. They have, they have collected liquidity that is lying below that demand. So after that liquidity has been collected again and it comes back up above your zone, that's where you can even go aggressive, your stop loss below this uh, weak rejection that will be there. Then you go. Same thing here, after they wiped out liquidity, this was the liquidity here, liquidity there in the form of double, double bottom there, that was the liquidity. So below here, you could have gone aggressive, 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 your entry, your stop loss just below, uh, just below the, 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 the whole demand zone which was here. So if ever you entered aggressively there, you are still safe, you are still safe, you are still safe and your, 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 your aggression is valid. Unlike someone who is just entering aggressively without a, 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 in awareness of knowing this uh, concepts like the, the collection of liquidity and everything. So uh, I just want to show you now what is going to happen. Remember what I said in yesterday's Zoom session, that even if the market is going up, it will not go up in a straight line. It will not go up in a straight line. So let me just give you a framework of what is what is most probably going to happen uh, as, it, uh, as it will be going up. One thing that I like about it is that already we have a, an internal change of character, which is this one. So this internal change of character, right now we can have a, a, a pullback. A pullback is imminent. A pullback can happen, but we don't care about all of that. Uh, our focus is where the market is going, which is our target there. So let me just uh, remove all these other drawings. Um, right. So 
Let me go to four hour. So if you listen carefully to what I said in yesterday's session, yesterday's session, I, 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 I clearly uh, spoke to you guys concerning the four hour, why it's a very good time frame for you to really uh, look clearly at what the market is doing, what the market is not doing. The four hour can give you all the all those clear, 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 uh, what clear indications. So this is the four hour. Four hour is so 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 clear. So according to the four hour, this is our first target. Remember what we said yesterday. That is our first target. If it comes there, if it comes there, you can shift your stop loss to maximum profits because the ultimate ultimate target is that one. The ultimate target. Ultimate target is that one. So remember what I said yesterday, that it won't go straight up in a straight line, right? It can come, 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 break structure, give a pullback before a continuation up. That is very, very possible. So now the trades that you are currently in, those are those are those are very good trades for you. And they are with they are the, the trades that you're actually in right now. There are trades that are worth holding all the way to this first target. Why? Because you are you are in you are you are in line with with the, the, the order flow, the order flow here, which is the, the, the this overall order flow. This is a bullish order flow. When you are in when you are in a buy position, especially from a major zone, and we're in a bullish order flow market, that is a high probability trade that is worth holding. Those are trades that are worth holding all the way to. Uh, uh, the TP. So the trades that you are currently in, those are trades that I can definitely, definitely encourage you to keep on holding. The only thing now that can happen, if you look closely now, we have a demand. In as much as we tapped into this demand, so this one is mitigated. The possibility of it going, going all the way up before coming back down here, it's high. Why is it high? Because already the agenda here was simply to come back and mitigate this, then go up. That was the agenda. The agenda, for example, in this case, the agenda here for this demand here, the agenda was to come and mitigate that demand and go up. So after coming back and mitigating the demand like this, we went up. We left this demand here. Same thing with, with this demand. After breaking structure, after this, after this demand went on all the way to break structure, right? As coming back down, we are simply coming back to mitigate that un unmitigated demand, right? Which, which was the agenda? The agenda was to come back and mitigate that. Once we mitigate that, the only thing that we now need is to what? To go up. That's the, because we have fulfilled our mission, we have fulfilled our agenda. Our agenda was to mitigate that. So now the agenda is to go all the way up, all the way up and what? And break this structure to the upside. So now, a possibility, there are two possibilities now. Two possibilities. Uh, there is a possibility that this demand here, this other demand that you can see here, there is a possibility that the market is going to because this internal this internal change of character, it's the same, it's the same thing with uh this change of character. This change of character we pull back. So this internal change of character, it can actually give something like a pullback back into this demand before a continuation up. So uh, there are two things now. There are two things that I, I recommend uh, someone to do, especially these small account people. Small account people, small account people, if ever your account is less than $1,000, your account is a small account. So um, if ever your account is that small, what you can be doing uh, right now, there are two things that you can do. Because I might not give this retest entry. I might not get that chance, especially now that today says that tomorrow is almost Friday. And uh, a chance for me to be looking at the charts Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's very rare. That's why I always give these signals uh, once without mentioning this retest and these these pullbacks and everything. These uh these other entries, I only share them on on sessions like this. So this is the probability. There's this demand here, this demand that was left on the four hour. So this this four hour demand, there's a probability. There's a high probability that they can actually come. So them coming back down, they're giving us something like a double bottom. That's a, a, a form of a double bottom, some, something like this. Double bottom. Pa. So it coming back down. This is an opportunity again. This is an opportunity again to buy at there. So the advantage, let me tell you the advantage now. Let's say 
for example, Mr. Gasco there, Mr. Gasco, I think your account was on your account, your account was on how much? The bal what's the balance and what's the equity? Mr. Gasco, I just want to do an example with you. What's your balance and what's your equity? Major. Yes. My balance right now is thirty dollars and the, my equity is now one hundred and seventeen. Right. This is a good, good, good example. So $117. So this is equity. This, this means that he, 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 he is holding profits. And so now what you can do, Mr. Gasco, for you, especially and everyone else with a small account, right now what you can do is to close all your VIX 75 buys. Right. After you close, after you close, after you close now, you don't need to be awake or you don't need just to place a buy limit on this uh, demand zone. You place a buy limit there, your stop loss is just below the zone like this. So now the advantage of doing that, that is the, those are some of the things that are going to that that that, 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 that we're going to be teaching in the million dollar class. The advantage of doing that now, you were at 38 dollars initially. Now you are on 117. And if you close, it means you're, you're, you're already above $100, right? It means even if it comes back, it come, coming back into this demand, you, you have an opportunity now, an opportunity to enter even a lot size that is higher than the initial lot size that you used here. In this case, if it comes back here, you can even enter a 0 0.005. Uh, you can even enter uh i don't know how many positions of that uh, let me see let me see if it comes back uh on that demand which is here right there your stop loss right so there you can even enter a 0 0.005 now and with the 0 0.005 holding all the way to the first target that we're targeting which was this one it means you are going to gain almost $300, almost $300 from there to there, taking a 0 0.005 and your risk is lesser now. It's lesser than uh, your risk. I can say it's lesser than this initial one because you now have a bigger balance and your reward is now greater than your initial uh, reward that you're going to just gain from this. Then it comes back, it goes all the way with those initial trades without you closing anything. So this is those are some of the things that we teach. Uh, we're going to be sharing in the million dollar class, teaching people how to really flip accounts because people, they really have a challenge when it comes to flipping accounts, especially these small accounts. You need, it's an art. Flipping a small account is an art. It's an art. So this is what I'm saying. If your account is small, you can close. Closing, you're simply closing. Not only closing, there are reasons for closing. Number one, this is a flip zone. This is most probably the zone that is going to drop from. Why is it a flip zone? This was a this was a demand, and this was a demand. In a demand, if you look to the left, that's a demand here. That was a demand. It was a demand, then it was broken. So now this might be a possible retest of the demand. So that's the zone that it might drop most probably drop from before. before I hope I hope we are all in agreement. I hope we are all in agreement. I hope we are all in agreement. So this is this is the reason. This is a flip zone. This is a, a we call it a demand to supply, demand to supply flip or a demand to supply flip. It was a demand broken, so now it's now a supply. So it being a supply, it, the market must might drop from there. Dropping from there, it's simply dropping to tap into this and tab why is why why this zone is not is not tabbed uh, let me show you uh, uh, what i mean by tabbed tabbed i'm referring to something like uh, okay let's look at this practical example right when i mean tabbed i'm referring to this right if you look at this zone this demand here this demand here this second candle here its tail was still it's it closed inside this demand so that's not tapping this one now it closed above right closed above okay so 
this was the breakout of this demand. Breakout and retest. This was the retest, right? Let's look at another example. Here, let's look at this. The breakout of that out of that demand was this one. Breakout, we came back to retest. So here, someone could have entered on the breakout. There's nothing wrong with that. Then the retest here, someone can also enter on the retest there. So those are so many examples. Sa same thing with this same demand here that was also mitigated here. Someone can look at it as a break, break. This was the breakout, breakout and retest of the demand. Same thing here, this demand break, retest of the demand. Same thing here. We broke out, we broke out which was here. We broke out there. Which one is the breakout candle? This one. Break, retest. So that's a simple break and retest of a demand zone. Most of you, your knowledge of break and retest was only limited to trend lines, was only limited to support and resistance, but it can go as further as uh, the break and retest of demand zones, the break and retest of order blocks, the break and retest of even of even favorable gaps. So this is a, a simple, this will, this will be a break and retest. This will be a simple break and retest. But this is a possibility. This is a possibility of the market coming back to retest this demand before a continuation to the upside. So just for someone with a small account, uh, this is my advice. This is just my advice. You can close. Closing, you will re-enter again upon the retest of the demand. Up, upon the retest of the demand, you enter, you buy. Your stop loss is st still the same stop loss that we had here, which is just below there. So it's just an advice. It's just a suggestion. It's just an, a, a suggestion and advice to someone with a small account. I'm actually giving you a, a hint or a heads up of uh, what you can also be doing with uh, with that small account because most probably it can actually decide to drop from this region. If it doesn't drop from here, uh, maybe it will respect this fair value gap here, this fair value gap here as well. So the, those are two two zones. We have this fair value gap. Yeah, the valley gap and also this flip zone. So uh, that's my advice for small accounts. You can close and your re-entries are going to be here and your re-entries, they are going to be greater than your initial risk that you took. That's my advice. They still hold all the way to the upside. So uh, the next upcoming sessions will simply be us doing a follow-up follow of this, this uh, a follow-up of this, this particular trade. So you can even go down to one hour uh, or even to lower time frames to identify. I don't know who is making noise. Okay. So this is the internal change of character, right? Internal change of character. And that's the zone that I'm expecting to drop. So this is the four hour zone, right? Let me just remove this and hide this. Right. So this is the zone. This is the four hour zone, right? But then on the one hour, all you just need to do is to identify the one hour zone that is within this zone, right? In this case, the one hour zone that is within this zone is this this one. That demand there. If you look at that demand, that demand was not retested. This demand, second candle failed, third candle failed. Then this one, it broke out. Broke out. This one came, didn't retest it. Came and went. So most probably it can be this region. So I, the reason why I'm saying I, 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 I gave that advice for small accounts is because if ever your account is small, you, you, can't, you can't afford for the market to come back all the way to your entry point, taking all those profits. Because to you, those profits, they are huge. To your account, they are huge. To your account, those profits that you are currently holding, they are huge. That's why I'm advising you to close. Then once it comes back here, you simply enter. And, and that the advantage, you, your balance will now be bigger. You now have a bigger balance. All you, all you can do, you can even place a buy limit just above the zone. Just above, just above the zone so that even if it comes and does whatever it does, they, it, it, so your stop loss will be below there. Simple, simple, simple so this is also an opportunity for those that didn't manage to enter either here or even here it's an opportunity as well for those that are not even in don't just jump in anyway 
the market has specific zones that you must buy. Yeah, you don't just enter anyway, just because the train is moving. You don't just jump in anyway. So this is uh, one of the zones that it can most probably pull back onto. So that is an opportunity again. That is a very good opportunity again. So I hope I hope everyone understands and everyone is paying attention to what I, I just said here. So I just want to move on to the other instrument where our, uh, our other opportunity is, which is Boom 500. So Boom 500, uh, so both VIX 75 and Boom 500, we gave the signals already in the, in, in the VIP signals group. We gave the signals already. We gave the signals already. And everyone in the signals group, I hope by now they are in profit. Uh, everyone in that group, they are actually in profit. So it's the same thing here. Mm, it's the same thing here on on Boom. Let me just do a real quick, a quick, quick, quick. I hope I'm going to be very fast on this one. I just want to do a quick breakdown on Boom 500. The same thing that we did yesterday on Volatility 75. This, it goes to show you that, uh, to prove to you the point that I mentioned yesterday, that this market's, what whichever markets whichever pair you're trading the the way the the, the the with the way we look at the market it's the same thing the way the market moves is the same thing it's just that different pairs obviously they move differently at different times but the overall overall nature in which they move is the same 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 thing all you just need to do is to master once you ma <clears throat> you master the the, the 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 technicals of what we are trying to talk about you you will be uh let me just use this you will be you will be gone because you can trade any pair you can trade any pair at any time um so if you check it, it on this other chart i actually had i actually had the analysis already before the market even tapped into the zone if you look at this if you look at this chart this is a different chart but the same analysis on vix 75 i had the same analysis the market is just broken out here, and I say it is going to drop, drop, tap into my zone, which was here, uh, before going up, tap into the zone, and now it's flying up. So, uh, that is what we are looking at. So let me go. Let's let, let us go to let us go to boom, boom five hundred. Then we we take any questions if there are any questions before we close. So let's take a look at uh, Boom 500. Uh, let's look at Boom 500. Let's look at Boom 500. Okay. Let's look at Boom. Boom 500. Where is Boom 500? It's here. So Boom 500, uh, we are in, I can say partial, partial buys. Partial buys because of uh, this, the reasons that I'm going to show you. Uh, in here, right? So, boom 500. We almost have, uh, it's, I can say, I can say similar, but it's almost, 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 almost a similar thing, but it's different because in this case, the overall order flow is, is still, it still hasn't shifted. So, in this case, this was the previous swing lower high, swing lower low, right? Swing lower high, swing lower low, swing lower high, swing lower low, right? Then we go, we follow internal structure. Whatever is happening in between here, this is internal structure, right? So here, whatever was happening in between here, this is internal structure. And if, if you follow this internal structure, this is bearish order flow, right? Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, like that. This is bearish order flow, right? That is what we call bearish order flow. So where the bearish order flow ended, the low that broke the bearish order flow, the low that broke the bearish order flow, bearish order flow was broken here. The low that broke that bearish order flow, that is our swing lower low. It's lower than this one. Because it broke, uh, this was the previous lower high according to this internal structure, right? So this, this is just a shift of order flow. Order flow is bearish. This internal order flow is bearish. It's now bullish. The reason why it's now bullish, it can be one of one 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 or two reasons. First reason, uh, we might be pulling back. Remember, 
so long order flow is bearish, the market will, fall, will, will, will respect that bearish order flow up until that order flow changes. So in this case, this is simply, we can simply look at this as a pullback either into this zone, but most probably I'm targeting this zone. Why that zone? Why that zone? Because this one was mitigated, this one was mitigated, this one was mitigated, this one. The same thing on VIX, this one was the one that was left behind. So this one was not mitigated. Then there's also this one just below it. So what they will do, they will use this one as liquidity to tap into this one. They will use this zone as liquidity to tap into that one. Right. So that's the zone that I'm most targeting to uh, look forward maybe for some serious, serious sales from that region. So this can simply be a pullback. It being a pullback, you can, if you put a Fibonacci from the top to the bottom, you realize that uh, that region is around 78.6, which is a very good uh, pullback zone when it comes to uh, these pullbacks off. So that one can be a very swing, a beautiful swing trade to the downside all the way to 0%, right? Because it will be targeting this uh, swing lower low. That is if ever the order flow is going to continue in this overall bearish order flow. But if ever it wants, it wants to change this overall, so there are two, two possible scenarios. We'll break here, come there, drop. One, first scenario. Second scenario, that is a rare one, is whereby they come and retest this uh, this previous previous lower high. They can come all the way and drop. So even if they come and test there, it's still a bearish order flow market. So long they fail to break above there, it's still overall bearish. So whichever scenario, we will just take those cells depending on which of these zones the market is going to uh, give us that uh, internal shift in order flow. So, but basically, this is the first zone that I, major zone that I'm looking forward to. That's why the reason why our bias is is, is, is to go up is because even this first zone here is not even kept. So that's why this is the first target for the buys before maybe a pullback, uh, something like something like that. So let's look now at uh, what is happening on the four hour. For our time frame, uh, for our time frame, let's look at what's happening. This is for our time frame, right? So this is for our time frame. Remember what we said yesterday. You must be so, you must be so good and so accurate in analyzing internal or in, in this internal, this internal structure. You must be so good at uh, you pointing the correct lower highs and lower lows. So let's just point the correct lower highs and lower lows going to the upside. Let's just point them real quick here, right? This, uh, that's a that's a that's a that, that's a what? That's a higher high, higher low. This is a higher low because it's the one that broke here. This one, this one didn't go all the way to break here, so I don't consider that. I consider this one because it's the one that broke that one. Okay, let's go all the way. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here, this is the highest point that broke this internal structure. This is the lowest point that broke that highest point. So that's my higher, that's my higher low. That's my higher high. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Here you can see this is this is a break of internal structure, meaning that's a higher high. This one is a higher low because it's the low that broke that high. We follow. We follow. We follow. We follow. This internal structure was broken here. So this is the higher high. This is the higher low. This is the higher high. It's the one that broke here. This is the uh, where is the higher low? So now the higher low. Let's look at the higher low. Let's look at the higher low. Which one is the higher low? This one is the higher high because it broke this. Where is the higher low? The higher low, the lowest point that broke that high. The lowest point that broke that high was this one. This one it didn't break. This one it went all the way and broke. So that's the that's the higher low. So that's the higher low. And this was simply the break of structure here. Right. So let's go forward. Let's go forward. Let's look at sub internal structure. Uh, let's follow sub internal structure. Higher high, higher low, higher high. So it still hasn't it, it, it still hasn't been broken. That's why. We still have uh, uh, some room for some buys 
to the upside there. You can also see that there's a form of a trend line. There's a trend line. And also we can see a double double top that is just below our major zone, first major zone. First major zone is that one. And that double top is simply a form of liquidity. And if ever it's going to come down, it has to come down, come and come and collect this liquidity. Come and take out this liquidity before it even give us any reversal to the downside. Like this. That's liquidity there. So what can happen is come check out this liquidity before giving us any move to the downside. And that move to the downside, be so careful. Don't be quick to think that, hey, so this thing is now going down. No, because remember, where is our previous higher low? Our previous higher low is this one. So long this one is not broken, the market is still in a bullish order flow. To check these higher lows, they're not being broken. Even if it came down, it never broke. Even if it came down, it never broke. Even if it came down, it never broke. Even if he, even if he had taps, in, taps into that region and it comes all the way down here, so long it doesn't break this one, it's still going to go up. It still has the possibility of shooting all the way up. So why did I mark this zone as a zone that it can come back to? Uh, it's one of the zones that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that it can come back onto and maybe also this other zone. So those are two regions, this one and this one. Those will be your targets for any sales that you take after the uh e e e what do you call this the shift of internal order flow on that on, on that zone once it's once order flow or once you get a change of character or whatever on one hour 30 minutes once you get that you can take sales targeting this first region and this second region before a continuation to the upside so this one or this one will be your next higher low higher low before maybe a higher high on that zone there so this one, this is the prediction right now. We are simply targeting the market to push all the way to the upside. We have a demand that is supporting that. We have a demand that is supporting that. And also what else do we have? Let's go to one hour. We have a demand, we have a trend line. We have a demand zone, we have a trend line. Right, you can also see to the left here, this demand. We tapped into this demand, we went up. We, we tapped into this other demand and we are now going up. So, so right now, uh, this is the this is the this is the analysis. This is the analysis. The first time we came, we failed to, to break there. Okay, we are coming down. So now this move here, I'm expecting to come and take out this liquidity. Take out that liquidity before it drops. So this is what we are looking forward to. So someone can also see something like a range. Someone can see this as a range whereby you have a high and a low, high and a low. So meaning if ever we are at a low, we have to go back and touch the high before we come back down. Someone can look at it in that way. Uh, someone can look at it in that way. And also someone can also consider. So this, this internal change of character, it's also the indication that is supporting this bias. Internal change of character will come back, we mitigate, we go up. Internal change of character, internal change of character, we mitigate, then we go up. Internal change of character, we mitigate, then we go up. So that's the that's the thing with that's the that's the, the bias that is supporting our bias that we are currently in right now on uh on on on, on boom five hundred. So there is a zone that I'm expecting it to cut to tape and to on especially on 30 minutes. Once it taps into that zone, that's where people can even go aggressive, those who want to go aggressive. Uh, is it on 30 minutes? Yes, it's on 30 minutes. Uh, we are in the buys already, remember? But this triple bottom here, this is liquidity, right? So since that is liquidity, we need to identify a zone that is below that zone. And if you look at the 30 minute demand is this one. 30 minute demand is this one. So it can come, it can come, it can come, check out this liquidity, tap into the zone, then go. So those are zones where you can go aggressive. You can actually go aggressive there, you stop us below here. So this is simply liquidity here, liquidity. So guys, that is it, that is it, we are done. We are done, we are done, we are done. So that is the analysis for Boom 500. Uh, if you have any questions, you ask me in the inbox or in the group that we have 